Hey, welcome into the second episode of The Fearless Flip with Valentin Pitts. If you missed the first episode, pause, stop this video, go check out the first one. You need to see all the before pictures of this project on Glen Avenue in the Tower District in Fresno. It's a little bit of a mess, but you're about to see the transformation. Before we go any further, make sure you have liked this video, make sure you are commenting when it's done, and also make sure that you are subscribed to our channel, hit that notification bell so that you know when all of our content is coming out. Now let's get to it and see what Valentin Pitts does while the project is going on. He's not at that project as much as you might think, and how he has transformed this amazing, this actually not so amazing house into an amazing one. Let's get to it. Since we last left off, I'd say we're about 85% finished. We'll be all done this coming week. Pretty much everything went on track as planned and as scheduled. We have about six projects that we're working on right now as far as flips. And then I had a, a triplex that I bought myself. So I had to take the crew off of Glen for about a week to handle the triplex. There's actually so much stuff to do here in the office. I don't go out often. I have my business partner uh, handle a lot of that and I get updates in many ways. So I'm, I am updated, but I don't actually have to go down and physically be there every day. In the beginning, I was out there every day. First of all, I got too stressed for no reason, and then I stressed everybody else out. I'm better not being there. Uh, so I kind of just get the updates here in the office. I do check up every few weeks or so. Right here, what we do is all the marketing that goes out, all the deals that come through, so I'm constantly on the phone with sellers. I also sell our flips too. So I have that whole aspect going on of selling a house. I try and, uh, you know, when I get to my board, I'll, I'll put up my task for the day. I, usually I don't, I don't fill it up. That's on my calendar, but I'll put the top three things that I need to do uh, that are important that's gonna progress the goals. Yeah, so this is what helps me not be out on the project and I get to kind of track its progression of each project. So we have the properties out here, the date of purchase, and when we actually started the project. Then here, I have the contractor mark what stage the property's at. Before we start the project, this is the estimated date to completion. Here, finally, we have the official date and how long it took us to finish each project. Our goal is always five weeks. Four to six weeks is what we average. So yeah, so that's basically, that gives me the snapshot of where we're at with each project. Every day I'll come here, I'll mark off, I calculate how many days I have to live technically, and this kind of gives me a reality check. Like I don't have, you know, I don't have forever, so I'll, you know, like today I have to mark off. Now I have 15,222 days, 32 days to live my why. So I just kind of remind myself of why I do what I do every day. I want to live life abundantly. And the way I'm going to do that is by having good assets that produce cash flow well above and beyond of what I need to live on. That's how I'm going to live a life abundantly, which is going to give me freedom. So, you know, then I go, I see my son and it just like, it clicks every evening, every morning. Freaking on fire, man. Every time I see that, I get on fire. This kind of inspires me every day. I have my freedoms here in this country. Do I not want to do this? And the, the answer is always no. Like, yeah, I want to do this. All right, then put in the work. So I come in and I do the work every day because this means a lot to me, man. We have our freedoms to do what we want to do. All right, here we are about two months later and you have this thing perfectly renovated, like just driving up to this man. Uh, you gotta be proud of this thing. Yeah, I'm proud of it for sure. It's, uh, it's nice. I especially like the lawn. I know some people like to do the lawn, so I'm just kind of mm -hmm. leave it. What, what's your thought about the lawn? Depending on the season. So we, I think the first time we were here was in May, I just drop seed down. So oh, nice. if it's really hot, I'll do sod, but it depends on what type of house too. You know, if I'm mm -hmm. further south, I don't worry too much about it. So this one, what was either an obstacle or maybe something that you um, had to maybe uh, take a little bit of a different route than what you thought you were originally going to do um, to, to make this thing work? Yeah, no, so our budget was 30,000 around there. The biggest threat to our budget was back in the backyard with the carport and the city getting involved and wanting us to do permits, engineering and everything for the carport because we're in tower. We basically still stayed on budget even with those threats. We were, we're at around 32 all in. Perfect, so you were a problem solver. You figured out how to be able to save money. We're gonna find out more about that carport situation in just a second, but I am excited to see the inside of this house. Let's go check it out. Let's do it. All right, so we're finally all done with Glenn. Let's Walk inside and see what we got here. 
So uh, as you guys can see, we have the laminate floor going out through all the way through the kitchen. The dual pane window kind of paint the vision to the buyer of how they should put their furniture. So I guess the best way would be probably like a L-shaped couch this way. I think the can lights look great too. It just has a sleek look to it. All right, so in the dining room here, what we did was uh, we kind of refinished the original china cabinetry here. It looks great. So we did a nice little arch here just to kind of give the house character and a separation from the dining to the kitchen area. All right, so in the bedroom, we went ahead and just did uh, just a, a nice carpet, nothing fancy, uh, but it looks good. The baseboards kind of look good here too. And we upgraded the electric uh, lights fixtures there to kind of give it that modern updated look as well. All right, so in the bathroom, we went and basically gutted everything out. Um, it's uh, nice and simple, clean, uh, nothing fancy, but uh, it's a, everything is new. So we tore out the original tub, just a simple vanity and new toilet, new tile. Valentine, this kitchen though, man, this is awesome. Talk to me, I mean, we had a, a pony wall there before. I remember there was a window there. Now the window's over here. Talk to me about just the transformation here, it's awesome. Now it flows, that's the whole idea when we're in here before, uh, is how do we make the floor plan functional? So now it is, right? Everything just flows real nice. And with the kitchen, I wanna stress once again, like for, for at least for our business, the importance of systemizing things, right? This is the white cabinets. Anything under 250,000 in resale, we do granite. Anything above that is quartz. And so with our vendors, they know what we have. So we're able to negotiate pricing way down. I mean, stupid low for a kitchen like this. Because we standardize everything, we're able to get really great pricing on that because now you're not guessing of what you're doing. So you said granite for under 250,000 and then over 250,000 using quartz. Yeah. Uh, what's the reasoning behind that? Let's have a buyer. Anything under 250,000 is more likely gonna be an FHA buyer that comes in and it's just, I mean, it looks okay, it's, it does a job. Anything over 250,000, the buyer has a more discriminating taste kind of and so they have higher expectations and quartz works really well with, uh, with the higher end buyer. Okay, cool, and then our favorite water heater room, we gotta go check that thing Let's out now. Yeah. I remember I could not figure out how you were going to turn this into both uh, washer dryer, and a bathroom, but you, yeah. you have successfully done that, Valentine. I've got to give you a round of applause. It's really, really good. So, uh, man, there, if, if for those of you that have not seen the first episode, you got to go back and watch the first episode, but there was a water heater right here, and Valentine was talking about how he was going to turn this into a bathroom. I just couldn't see it, but uh, dude, show, show us what it looks like now. Yeah, no, so yeah, exactly. All this was dead space. It was just a water heater room. So um, we we added um, indoor washer dryer, basically enough for a stackable right here. So now you have that and you don't have to go outside because before it was outside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My wife would hate that. Um, and then the, the biggest value add here is, is adding this little half bath here. So just enough space for your toilet and your vanity. You can even wash your hands while you're on the toilet. So <laughs> efficiency is key. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait to do B after A. All right, so our friend the shed is gone. Uh, we've got this nice little carport here, but uh, as you were telling me off camera, uh, this this was a story in itself. Kind of walk us through how you got this thing over here through all the, the city issues that you were having. Yeah, so, you know, it doesn't matter. I've been doing this for over four years now, uh, full-time fix and flip, and you know, still haven't encountered everything. Uh, so we had that garage, for lack of a better term, right? And we demoed it out. Uh, we had the city kind of, you know, roll up. So we're like, you know what? Let's go ahead and pull a permit for a carport to replace that garage. Okay. We were about to get issued on, on the permit and somebody uh, at City Hall comes down and they're like, you know what? You're in tower. So it has to be uh, to certain specs and, and aesthetics and design. You're going to need an engineer. You're going to need all these things. And basically it's estimated, you know, everything out the door was going to be like six, 6,000 at least. Oh my gosh. Um, so that was very frustrating, you know, because now you have to make a decision. We're ready to come on market. We met all of our timelines as far as inside the house, mm -hmm. uh, but now we're getting held up here. Um, usually the one thing that you don't have to worry about, because like you said in the first episode, you don't usually focus on the backyard at all. <laughs> exactly, but yeah. since we're like right off here, right off home, uh, they were giving those those issues. So I basically made a quick decision. I said, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get buy a prefab carport, set it 18 feet back, you know, because mm -hmm. I don't want to blatantly tell them F you or anything. <laughs> then I'll really piss them off. <laughs> so we set it 18 feet back and 
and here it is. So no permits. This thing costs about a thousand bucks. I'm gonna be honest. I kind of missed the shed. <laughs> it was it was it was art. Yeah. <laughs> art. We'll call it that. <laughs> Man, I cannot wait to see what these other projects are looking like that you've got going. This one was a beauty. I'm just I'm, I'm stoked for you, man. So congratulations on on a perfect flip. But what is going on right now in your business? What else is next for Valentine? Right now, just cranking out as many flips as possible. We're in a good market right now. You know, with rates, with it's just like a perfect market for buyers and sellers. So just cranking those out. We have about five we're working on. I just picked up one I'm really excited about in Reedley. ARV is about 300. Picked it up for wow. 131. Oh my gosh. So that's one of those Grand Slam deals once a year, right? Yeah. So uh, excited about, you know, those. And, Do you know what the rehab is going to be on that? About 40. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, that's going to be a good, good one. Good Absolutely. Yeah. It's really digging in and, and finding these deals, honestly, and that's time consuming, as you know in your business, right? Deal acquisition is really time consuming and going into these appointments with sellers so we can have these so we can have these deals and keep the guys busy. Yeah, well, hey, you are so systematic and meticulous about everything you do in your business from your communication to working with contractors to what your next deal looks like. There's no wonder why you're so successful. And if you haven't checked out the podcast and the first episode of this, make sure to go to fearlessflipping.com, check out the other episodes. And for Valentine, this guy has got a lot coming up, so we will definitely be tracking your progress, man. And if people do want to get in contact with you, well, we've given them enough chances. If they haven't seen it by now, they just need to go down to the bottom of this description on the video and they can get in contact with you, Valentine. Thank you so much. This has been an awesome episode of The Fearless Flip. Go conquer real estate investing.